<laughs> Before starting any of these procedures, make sure you use safety glasses. Okay, so anything with a heated asphalt pump has this uh, shutoff valves here. Uh, we'll have to shut them off before we take the hoses off in the back. So just follow the decals for the off position. Let's turn that valve off and this valve off and then you're set. So after I sh shut off the valves up front, I'm going to come back here, take these two hoses off uh, using a screwdriver. We're going to need a knife to cut the hose. Top holes have to be replaced because you have to cut both ends. So we'll have to replace this all together. Uh, for the next step, we'll use a half inch wrench and a half inch socket, corner socket, to remove the cover over the asphalt pump shaft. And just use Shaft should be that. Next step would be to rotate the shaft so the all the Allen head bolts are sticking up so you can get to them easy. Uh, and then I'll use a 3/8 socket or a 3/8 Allen wrench socket to remove the bolts with a half inch drive impact. You might need a hammer sometimes to get this pop loose. There you go. So the next step is take a half inch wrench, remove the last few bolts in the gearbox. When these two bolts come out, this the gearbox and the motor are going to come off at that point. So you got to be Ready for that. <laughs> now I just take the gearbox and motor and set it down on the spray bar thing. You alright? Alright, so we're going to remove the actuator from the the bracket here that holds them on because the faceplate when you pull this out is going to interfere with hitting this actuator so we're going to remove that using 9 16 wrench out of the way. Next step would be to remove the asphalt pump base plate bolts. Uh, 9 16 wrench, 9 16 socket with the impact. There's two bolts behind these two um, fittings here. You use your wrench to pop those loose. You just loosen those up, back them out as far as they go. 
until they hit the pipe. And it should be far enough to get the faceplate off. So you just break those two loose, back them out. And then with your impact, take the rest of the bolts out. Okay. So there's one more step to this. So take one of your bolts from your asphalt pump. There's a threaded hole right up here in the top. Take your impact. As long as all your bolts are loose. So run that bolt in until it separates the face plate from the pump. Just have to work these bolts back. And the asphalt pump will uh, All right, so you may need a pry bar to separate this. So the next thing we'll do is pull the impeller set out with the faceplate. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is just inspect inside the, the asphalt pump to make sure there's no buildup or anything inside there from the metal shavings. Mm -hmm. That one's all good. All right, so the next step would be to burn the rough edges around the, the end of the impeller, both sides. The shield. I'm going to use a DA sander. That's one.
Yeah, like I said, next thing I'm just going to clean everything up, put it back together. All right, so putting it back together, I'd use the, the manual and follow the instructions in the manual as far as where the, the dots on the impellers go. Your number one impeller is on your, your main shaft and with the dot facing the face plate. You have to install the snap ring. Mm -hmm. Stop the shit. Oh, stop. So one impeller one and impeller three should be on the same shaft facing the away from each other. Right, put the fire plate in. Same thing with that. Two and four should be on the same shaft. I'll put back together. Okay, I'll set it there for now. The pump gasket here gets in the way of putting it back together. So what I do is take a utility knife, cut that gasket. Get it out of the way so it doesn't interfere with the faceplate going back in. Next thing I'm going to do is put the actuators back together, get those back in place.
Next, put the motor and gearbox back up to the, with the two bolts that okay. attach to the face plate. My two bolts. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is get these two keyways lined up on the shaft. You might need a pipe wrench for that. Put a pipe wrench barely on it, just enough to turn the pump. Pump should turn pretty easy. Just want those in line, so when you install the coupler, Uh, when tightening the coupler back up, you want to make sure the where the split's at. You got the same amount of uh, gap on both sides. So the next step is to install your safety shield over your pump shaft. Alright, so the next thing to do is to install your new chunk of hose between your two fittings at the top of the pump. And the hose that goes on the bottom, where you cut it, you gotta shorten it up. Hose cutters. Rough chunk of hose. There should be enough uh, hose to pull it up and connect it underneath the truck. Tighten your hose clamps down and so the next thing to do would be to turn your valves back on up front to the open positions. All right, so the last thing I would do is check vacuum on the pump. Just put in bar suck back, suck back mode, put in the manual mode, hit the auto start button, and then turn your pump up. Crack the bleeder valve here. Just make sure you got vacuum here. We got plenty of vacuum, we're good. Shut that off and pump off, go back to the home position and shut her down. As with any piece of equipment, please follow all the safety guidelines in the operations manual and wear the proper personal protection equipment required by your company or the state. We all want to return home safe every night, so be safe out there. You can contact your local dealer or the Etnire factory to talk to a professional service or parts representative at the information provided on the screen. Thank you and have a good day.